nothing inside. Saints have got to defend the paint against some of St. Peter's good big guys, guys like Marvin Dominique and Quidier Welton. And I think Dominique is probably the key, the Fordham transfer. He's a guy that can go outside, but he really likes to back guys down. He plays a small forward, power forward position, but he's athletic, he's got good size, he's got great touch. So they have to defend him, but also on top of just defending the true post players, it's stopping dribble penetration. It's not allowing easy layups. This is a field goal percentage challenge team in St. Peter's. Make them shoot outside the paint. Don't let them take close shots to the basket. Don't let them get high percentage shots. If Siena can do that, then they can win. They have a good chance of winning the game. Our final key to the game is to take care of the ball. Siena, first 11 games this season, they had less than 10 turnovers 10 times. Well, in the last six games, they've had more than 15 turnovers five times. So the Saints have suddenly started turning the ball over a lot. Against a team that fuels their offense via the turnover. St. Peter's, again, a very defensive-minded team, a great half-court defensive team. They'll extend themselves a little bit, but they will try to turn you over and get out in transition. They have athletes that can score around the rim. So if you turn the ball over, St. Peter's will run enough and get those easy baskets that they can't afford to give up if you're a Saints fan. Take care of the basketball. Get the possessions higher against the St. Peter's team that likes to keep the possessions low. Those are key bank keys to the game. Our Napa know-how fact of the game is going to go along with something that Tom just mentioned in his keys. The all-time series, St. Peter's leads at 44 to 38. St. Peter's has won six of the last eight meetings. The key, or the Napa know-how fact of the game, Siena has not scored 70 points, the number Tom mentioned, against St. Peter's since February of 2009, six years ago. And can you say Fran McCaffrey, and can yeah. you say different style of play? So, again, this is a Siena team averaging 72 points a game. Can Siena do what they want to do today, or will St. Peter's dictate the entire game? If St. Peter's dictates this game, they win. If, Saint, if Siena can, they have a chance of winning. If they can get this game in the 70s, they have a great chance of winning. That is our Napa know-how fact of the game. Let's take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by the Leah Auto Group. For St. Peter's in the backcourt, a 6-1 sophomore from Neptune, New Jersey. Jersey. Travis Weish, six and a half points, sixth in the MAC with three assists per game. Also a guard, a fifth-year senior, six foot two from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Desi Washington leads the team in scoring 14 points a game, four rebounds. Three guard alignment. 6'4 senior from Roswell, Georgia, Tyler Gaskins. Nine and a half points, two rebounds a game. At forward, a 6'7 fifth year senior from Miramar, Florida, Marvin Dominique. Preseason first team, all Mac. 13 and a half points, eight rebounds a game. And at forward, a 6'8 sophomore from Philadelphia, Whittier Welton. Six and a half points, five rebounds a game. 17 blocks leads the team. St. Peter's led by a former Siena assistant, John Dunn. Ninth season, 95 and 171. His record led the Peacocks to the NCAA tournament in 2011. For the Saints, different starting five than last game, but one constant at the point of six foot sophomore from Waldorf, Maryland. Marquise Wright, 13 points, four rebounds, five assists, two steals per game. At shooting guard, a 6'6 senior from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Rob Poole, 15 points a game, seventh in the MAC, leads the team five and a half rebounds. At small forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland, Levon Long. Levon up to 11 and a half points a game now and five rebounds. At forward, a 6'8 sophomore from Troy, New York, Javion Ogunyemi. Nine points, four boards, leads the team with 20 blocks. 6'8 freshman at forward from the Netherlands, Willem Brandwick. Three points, two and a half rebounds in 14 minutes a game. Saints led by head coach Jimmy Pazzo, second season, 28 wins, 28 losses. The 11th season overall, 173 and 163. Coach Patsos joins us in the NBT Bank Coaches Corner. Talks about why all the coaches are wearing sneakers today. You may have seen that on TV around the country this week. We'll talk to him about that and more when we come back on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. You are listening to Talk 1300. Capital Off Track Betting is the player's home right here in the Capital District. At Capital OTB, the player is first. Capital OTB, where they offer over 60 branch locations, including easy bets, along with photo bet and internet wagering. Capital OTV is all about making wagering easiest for the people. And at Capital OTV, they're much more than just placing a wager. Capital Off-Track Betting is a big part of the Capital District. At Capital OTV, they are working with multiple counties in the upstate area, helping to provide jobs and benefits to the counties that they represent. Also, 
Capital All Track Betting is constantly informing. Capital ATV understands that information is vital and constantly provides it by updating track odds and by offering live virtual tote boards and payouts. Capital All Track Betting also offers multiple channels of live streaming, past performances, online handicapping contests, and top flight handicap analysis. Capital All Track Betting also has up to date information 24 7 on their website at capitalotv.com. For all your racing information, head to capitalotv.com. Does your school's fitness area need an equipment upgrade? Are you a nonprofit who wants to create a space to help improve the health of those you serve? Vent Fitness and iHeartMedia are teaming up with local area businesses to help one lucky winner reinvent fitness at their location. Here's how it works. Go to ExtremeGymMakeover.com to apply. Submit photos, videos, and tell us your story to show why you need an Extreme Gym Makeover. Details online now at ExtremeGymMakeover.com. Is it time for you to redo your office or workplace? It's time for you to reach out to Bill Davies and the staff at Davies Office. They've been there for over 60 years, servicing companies not just in the Capital District, but nationwide. When companies across the U.S. make a change with their office and workplace, the first call they usually make is to Bill Davies right here in Albany and the folks at Davies Office. With a vast inventory of pre-owned system furniture, an ultra-modern 300,000 square foot manufacturing storage facility, and a top staff. Davies Office are the folks that always get the first call. Davies Office, where their services include space planning and design, delivery and installation, moving and relocation, even disaster relief services. Davies, if you have a fire, Davies, if you have water damage, will be there to take care of you. And remember, Davies reinvented extra value. You'll see significant increases in your office's efficiency, productivity, and timeliness when Davies is done. Bill Davies and Davies Office. Reach out today by calling 449-2040 or check them out online at DaviesOffice.com. The cameras are snapping. The tape recorders are rolling. People are counting on you for solid, no-nonsense answers. This is Siena basketball coach Jimmy Patsos here, and I trust Mark Thomas Men's Apparel to make me look great courtside and front row center at the press conference. You or the man in your life will be at the top of your game when you rely on Mark Thomas Men's Apparel. MarkThomasMensApparel.com. It's off Wolf Road, right behind Macaroni Grill, and they're even open seven days a week. You're listening to Seattle Basketball on the Talk 1300 Seattle Basketball Radio Network. The Saints are home today, playing the Peacocks of St. Peter's. Now let's head courtside for the call of today's game. Welcome back to the Times Union Center here in Albany, New York. Joined here in the MBT Bank Coaches Corner by Siena basketball coach Jimmy Passos. Coach, your team a couple nights ago pulled away from Marist. What did your team do to come away with the victory? You know, we kept scoring. Rob Poole obviously sparked us. And um, Marist, very good team. They got three starters back. They got Kelly back. And you can make big threes. And when you make threes, they're dangerous. And uh, we held on, though. You know, we, we, we made me sweat a little by not making free throws. But overall, it was a really good experience for us to just play well in front of 6,800 people and pull out the win. The crowd was great and hopefully they're here today again. You touched on Rob Poole. He had a big game, five three-pointers in his return from injury. How much does having him back open up the offense? Yeah, when he's making shots, Poole's good. Plus, just he's a fiery guy. He's got a couple of going. You know, Jamie, I was solid again. You know, he's got to get in. Will, Will, I'm going to be by But, you know, we're going to go as much as he I thought it took a few minutes, but then like, he's really started to get the ball in. Today we're going to need our bench. I think we need more bench production. Whether it's Ryan, whether it's Evan, or, or Jimmy Page, we need more bench production because with Desi Washington, you have to constantly guard him. And Marvin Dominique's one of the best players in the league. He's one of the big men who just great. So with John, they're going to grind. You know, they're going to grind it out, and it's going to be a tough game. And it'll be a really good challenge for us. Here in the NBT Bank Coaches Corner with Siena basketball coach Jimmy Patsos. We take a look at St. Peter's. First time we've seen the Peacocks this year. They are 9 and 11. They're 3 and 6 in the MAC. It's very strong defensively, as always. What can we expect from the Peacocks? That's it. They're going to grind it out defensively, and they're uh, very good on offense. Desi Washington is going to be a good the place. And they're going to be a good place. You know, Tyler Gaskins shoots three after catch, but I really believe they go as my own. He's going to be a good place. player. Uh, it's one of these games that's just, you know, it's going to take a few minutes of every game. The top is really going to be top of the top. The league's wide open. I think with Isaiah Wade, it's out of the game. It's really wide open. You have to get in. You just have to get back up.
Lots of coaching watching college basketball from around the country this week. You see all the coaches wearing the sneakers in support of coaches versus cancer. The cause that you're very involved in. What does that cause mean to you? Yeah, it's very Jim Beheim, Fran Dumpy, Gary Williams, these guys were innovators in this thing and they started it early and I think it's a great cause. And the sneakers is just to remember that we're all lucky to be coaching, obviously to raise money, but Will Brown and I do an event early in the fall too for this. So Coach versus Cancer is turning into a great thing. I think the one guy who's done the most for it is Jim Beheim. This is just one of those things where we've all had some everyone so, Got to put it in perspective. You know, we're all lucky to be coaching basketball. It's one of the games on Sunday at 2 o'clock. And uh, just grateful to be here. Grateful to be here coaching this evening. Coach, we appreciate the time. Best of luck today. Bye, General. Who do you like in the Super Bowl, General? I don't know, but I hope the balls aren't floated correctly from the title. Yeah, it's over. I think the Patriots are going Our thanks to Jimmy Patsos for stopping by the NBT Bank Coaches Corner. Starting lineups being introduced here at the Times Union Center. Take a look back at them as well. St. Peter's goes with three guards, Travis Weish, Desi Washington, and Tyler Gaskins in the backcourt. Up front, it's Marvin Dominique and Quidier Welton for head coach John Dunn. Saints go with Marquise Wright and Rob Poole in the backcourt. Lamont Long, Javion Ogunyemi, Willem Brandwick, Across the front line for head coach Jimmy Patsos. St. Peter's 9 and 11 on the season. 3 and 6 in the MAC, currently in ninth place. Siena 8 and 10. The Saints have won two in a row, going for their first three game winning streak of the season. Siena 5 and 4 in the MAC, tied for fifth place in the conference standings. One of those swing games. Yes, Siena's two games ahead of St. Peter's right now, but you get these feelings, you get the feeling that these two teams could be neck and neck at the end of the season. Uh, there's no question. I mean, they, they could easily see each other in the MAC tournament. And, you know, this is a St. Peter's team that just figures out a way to get wins when they're not supposed to. And losing Desi Washington for eight games, they're still 9 and 11. They may be 3 and 6 in the league, but they're 9 and 11 overall. With a, with a win over Rutgers. So this is a very capable team. And Siena is a team that really has been an unknown. Who's gonna show up? Is Willem Brandwick gonna have zero points and four rebounds in 20 minutes? Or is he gonna have 12 points, eight rebounds in 26 minutes? Who knows? Our officials today are Robert Testa, Greg Guerrero, and Rusty Cooper. Balls in the air, St. Peter's wins the tip. They're in the road blue jerseys. White St. Peter's across the front, white name across the back, white numbers, blue shorts with white trim. Tyler Gaskins has the ball left wing. Feeds it left baseline for Marvin Dominique. St. Peter's backs in, Brandwick kicks it out for Tyler Gaskins. Out top for Desi Washington on the right side. To Weish, dribbles to the left elbow. Back out top, Washington 16 on the shot clock. Washington bounces it left side to Weiss, dribbles into the lane, bounces it down low, Dominique. He'll put up a hook shot from five, it comes up short, rebounded by Brandwick. Saints in the home white, green Sienna across the front, green name across the back, green numbers. White shorts with green and gold trim into the front court, right to left. Zone defense by the Saints, great job of contesting that jump hook by Dominique. Alley-oop, Brandwick hammers it down! The flying Dutchman, Willem Brandwick gets Sienna on the board. Well, one question was answered already. Willem Brandwick will not go scoreless. Great way to start the game for the Saints. I love the play. Good call, Jimmy Patsos. Great pass, Rob Poole. Out top, it's Gaskins. 2-0, Siena leads. One minute in, Travis Weish left side. Swing it around right side. Desi Washington gets a screen from Dominique. Top of the key for Gaskins. Dribbles in on right, feeds the post, Walton. He'll take a hook shot way off the mark. Rebound, Dominique. Out top for Washington. Up fakes from three. Pulls up from the free throw line. Left side, Gaskins. Wide open, didn't want to shoot it. Good recovery by Poole. Fresh shot clock for the Peacocks. Washington out top with 18.35 to go. 2 nothing Siena to Weish between the circles. Left side, Gaskins. Out top, Weish gets a screen from Welton. Takes it into the lane. Weish dumps it to Welton. Lost it. Turns it over. Pull the steal. Rob will run into the front court right to left. 
Gets it to Marquise right on the Sienna logo at midcourt. Sienna will get a screen right from Brandwick to Willem on the left side. Thought about the three. Post feed. Oganyemi knocked away and stolen. Trevis Weish the loose ball. Up ahead Washington on the left wing. At top for Weish. Right side Dominique. Multi-faceted player will shoot a three and bury it. Saints went man to man. Dominique stepped out. Hit the high arcing. Three-point shot. The 6'7 forward, 36% from downtown, averages 13 and a half a game. Ryan Oliver set to check in. Oganyemi with the ball left side. Peacocks lead three to two. Hands it off to Long. Levon's first touch. Picks it up 18 feet away. Feeds the post for Oganyemi. Bobbled the ball, gets it back, dumps it to a cutting man. Knocked away, turned over. Dominique the steal. Here comes Weish left to right into the front court. Weish on the right wing to a trailing Gaskins. Left side, Dominique. Each of the Saints' big men have a turnover in three possessions. 22 on the shot clock, 3-2, Peacock, 17-20 to go. Weish hands it off, Washington, St. Peter's. Always a very deliberate team, averaging 61 points a game, also leading the max, 61 points allowed. Even more so against his own defense. Gaskins the open three, count it. Wide open, top of the key, no one went out to guard. Tyler Gaskins, a 40% three-point shooter, averages nine and a half a game, he gets on the board here. 6-2, Peacocks. Pool off a screen, lost it, another turnover. Weish ahead for Washington, one-on-one -on -one with Wright, lays it up and in. Three De turnovers and four possessions for the Saints. Desi Washington makes it 8-2 St. Peter. Saints can't hold on to the ball here with 16.40 to go. Have gotten one shot off. Pool left side, feeds the post Oganyemi. Javion to the basket, spins into the lane. Tough fadeaway hook shot, barely hit the rim. Out of bounds to St. Peter's with 16.32 to go. Not his shot. Oliver in for Brandwick. And it started with the pass to the post. I hit to get on Rob Poole for that, but the pass to the post made Javion step away from the basket. Now he's got to make a move from about 14 feet, and that's not Javion's strength, not yet as a sophomore. Give him the ball five feet from the hoop, let him do a drop step, but don't make him put the ball to the deck twice. 8-0 run for the visitors. Out top, Dominique. Left side, Washington. 8-2, St. Peter's lead, 16-15 to go. Washington between the circles, right side for Gaskins. Gets a screen left from Welton, takes it down the left side of the lane. Gaskins stops at the left elbow, off to Weish. Feeds the post, Welton low right block, double team. 10 on the shot clock, Welton, pass, batted away, and stolen by Ryan Oliver. Saints to run right to left, push ahead right side for right. Has pool open on the left wing, couldn't get it to him, instead has the ball batted out of bounds. Stays with the Saints, and a timeout brought to you by All-Star Wine and Spirits. 15.55 to go. St. Peter's 8, Siena 2 on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. You are listening to Talk 1300. Hi, I'm Scott from NH Kelman Scrap Recycling. Here to remind you, no matter what you call your recyclables, whether you call it old trash, junk, or just miscellaneous stuff, if you bring it to NH Kelman, it means extra cash in your pocket. Take a moment and look through your garage, attic, or cellar for old metal items. You'll be surprised at what they're worth. Recycle and put extra cash in your pocket. It's a win-win for everyone. NH Kelman Scrap Recycling. Open daily 7 till 5, Saturday 7 till noon. ATM, gas bill, debit card. School loans, new shoes, oil change. No matter how you use your money, when you bank at Key, we reward you. Golf clubs, sunscreen. Because Key Bank Relationship Rewards earns you points for everyday banking transactions. Direct deposit, then direct withdrawal. So to unlock your reward possibilities. Flying to Florida without paying for flying to Florida. Visit a Key Bank branch today or log on to key.com slash get rewards. Key Bank, unlock your possibilities. Certain restrictions apply for full details. Visit key.com slash get rewards. Remember FDIC. You're listening to Siena Basketball on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. The Saints are home today, playing the Peacocks of St. Peter's. Now, back to the game. Back here at the Times Union Center where St. Peter's has gotten off to a quick start. Peacocks lead Siena 8-2. They're on an 8-0 run. Saints have already turned it over three times. They've only gotten two shots off. Three turnovers in four minutes is not a clean start to the game for the Saints. They do have the ball out of bounds underneath their own basket. St. Peter's already with Travis Weiss with three assists to lead the Peacocks. And all eight St. Peter's points off of Siena turnovers. Evan Himes into the game for Rob Poole. Oliver will inbound right corner for Oganiemi. Saints attacking right to left. It is Marquise right between the circles. Left side for Evan Himes. The Evan senior. Evan Himes, the spark plug for this team. Down the right side of the lane, runs over a man, lost the ball, out of bounds, off of Himes' foot. 
Another turnover, Sienna's fourth. Lots of contact, no whistle. Evan comes off a quiet game, just two points in 15 minutes against Marist. Sienna won that game, pulling away in the second half, 69-60 to win their second in a row. Looking for their first three game winning streak of the season here. In the backcourt, Gaskins breaks the press easily for Dominique, left to right across the timeline. Out top for Gaskins to Desi Washington. Jamel Fields, fifth year senior from Albany Academy in Albany, New York. A transfer from Fairfield has checked in to the right elbow. Dominique shoots it from there and scores easily. Easily shoots that over Evan Himes at the foul line. Elias Desport, a junior from Sweden, has also checked in. Right side Oliver, out top to Long. Saints down 10-2, 15-15 to, to go. Right, left elbow. Lost the ball off his leg. It's on the ground. It's out of bounds. To Siena. And that's the typical hustle we are accustomed to seeing out of Jamel Fields. Tip the ball away from Marquise right near the three-point line. And then as the ball trickled to the, to the sideline, he full out dives for it, almost is able to come up with a steal. Himes out of the game, pool in. Saints have only attempted two shots in five minutes. Difficult. Oliver out top, right side for Poole. Straight away to Oliver, left wing, right. Feeds the post, Oginemi. Faces, skips it out right wing, long. Dribbles down the lane, gallops to the basket and scores. That's a great move right there by LeVon Long, slicing through defenders. So strong and physical at the offensive end. 14.40 to go, Saints break a long scoring drought and trail 10 to four. That was, a, that was a pump fake, one dribble going to his left right down the middle of the lane between several defenders. Fields out top for Desport, left side Tyler Gaskins. Out top Washington, right side Fields. Jamal always seems to play his best here at the Times Union Center. Certainly some extra motivation with friends and family in the crowd. Takes it down the lane, throws up a wild left-handed shot. It's blocked out of bounds. Two St. Peters with nine to shoot. Both teams starting to get a little bit physical already. We're only six minutes into this game and we can see the players starting to make moves to make contact instead of making moves to make a shot. Washington in the left corner, pivots out to the left wing with five to shoot. Washington lets Oliver go by, shoots a three and knocks it down. And the Peacocks are three for three from downtown. But the three point field goal doesn't matter in college basketball, only when you make it, it does. 14 minutes to go, 13 to four Peacocks lead, nine point advantage. Right, right side for Oliver. Feeds the post, Oginemi to a cutting right under the basket. Lays it in with the right hand and a foul. That's a nice post to guard cutting pass right there. Marquise right on the weak side. And once again, Javion Oganyemi giving up post position, stepping out to receive the pass. So now he's like eight to 10 feet away from the basket. But that time Marquise from the weak side makes a nice cut, the catch and the finish and the foul on Jamel Fields. First foul shots of the game. Brandwick in for Oganyemi. Chas Patterson comes in for head coach John Dunn. Wright completes the three point play. Much needed at this point in the game, 13 to seven. Sienna trails with 13.50 to go. Almost the turnover on the inbounds. And St. Peter's does keep it. Now Dominique loses the ball through his hands out of bounds. And I think he realized that his teammate was open underneath the basket. And before catching it, he was trying to make a quick pass. And because of that uh, mistake, that's a turnover on the Peacocks. In tennis, they would call that an unforced error. St. Peter shooting five out of seven, including all three of their three-point attempts. Saints are three for four. Brandwick, right side, out top. It's a pool, one of the back door to Brandwick, covered better this time, long. Wanted to feed the post instead. Oliver, right side, contested three, well short. An air ball, rebound, out of bounds. No, saved back in beautifully by St. Peter's Jamel Fields. A shot was tipped by Desi Washington, Ryan Oliver's three-point attempt. Dominique backing in Brandwick. Dominique pivots, tough shot from the left baseline's no good. Rebound volleyed off the backboard to right. Saints a run right to left, right to a trailing pool. Stutter step to Brandwick on the right baseline. Out top for right, wide open, three on the way. He got it. The next dimension of his game, that's a good inside outside. In transition, the Saints collapsed the defense, kicked it to the top of the key for a wide open three by Marquise Wright. Wright, a 29% three-point shooter, makes it 13 to 10. St. Peter's with 12.50 to go. Assist by Brandwick, love to see those post players with assists. Chaz Patterson drives to the basket, left baseline, out top, Desport, right side, Dominique to Washington. He traveled, turnover, 12.40 to go. Himes into the game, replacing Oliver. Checking in is Travis Weish, along with Quadir Welton for St. Peter's. Saints have scored six in a row now, 12.40 to go. 
Also checking in for the first time, Elijah Boone. Three points, two rebounds, 11 minutes a game, a 6'3 freshman. I'm gonna politely correct you, Marquise Wright has scored six mm. in a row. Wright who comes off a 14.5 rebound, four assist game against Marist. Gets it into the front court, left side to Himes, out top pool, thought about the three, kicks it out for Wright on the right side, straight away long, up fakes, goes to his right. Gets it to a cutting pool down the left side of the lane. High arching left-handed layup is no good. Rebound Chas Patterson for St. Peter's. Shovels it ahead to Travis Weish. Bounces it for a trailing Walton who will lay it in with the right hand. Good job pushing transition. Walton did a great job of running as a big man right down the middle of the court. Rim run, we like to call it. 15-10 St. Peter's. 12-10 to go. Himes at top for right. To pull off a screen on the right wing. Here, Jack a three. Off the left side of the rim, no good. Elijah Boone the rebound. That was deep. And fading away. Boone, nifty behind the back dribble to lose right. Gets it to a trailing Weish. I think Weish has four assists already. Yes, he does. Left side Patterson, left corner for Dominique. I'll think it, you confirm it. Weish only averages three assists a game, which is sixth in the MAC. Weish to the left elbow, bounces it down low. Triple team, Dominique, and foul. No, jump ball. Jump ball there will favor Siena after a timeout brought to you by All-Star Wine and Spirits. 11.40 to go. High scoring start. St. Peter's 15, Siena 10. On the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. You are listening to Talk 1300. This winter, leave the driving to Amtrak. Whether you're traveling for business or pleasure, Amtrak is simply the easiest and most convenient way to travel. Right now, you can enjoy a 15% off discount between any two stations within New York State when you visit ilovenewyork.com to book your ticket. And don't forget, Amtrak operates more than 300 trains a day and services more than 500 destinations spanning across the country. Visit Amtrak.com for more information. Amtrak, enjoy the journey. What started as a small ski shop in 1964 is now New York State's largest ski shop featuring all of the best brands in the industry. Alpenhouse is the place to go for all of your skiing, snowboarding, and winter needs. We carry all of your favorite brands like UGG, The North Face, Sorel, Under Armour, Spider, Obermeyer, Patagonia, K2, Vocal, and Carbon, just to name a few. Come see Alpenhouse Ski Shop, conveniently located in Amsterdam and Clifton Park Center, or shop online at alpenhouseskishop.com. You're listening to Siena Basketball on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. The Saints are home today, playing the Peacocks of St. Peter's. Now, back to the game. 11.40 left to go in the first half. St. Peter's 15, Siena 10. Robert Lee, Tom Herter with you from the Times Union Center. Who said St. Peter's is offensively challenged? We did. Six out of nine from the field and three for three from downtown. And we said before the game, if this St. Peter's team is making shots, which let's be honest, they haven't most of this year, with the way they play defense, they're gonna be very tough. Well, unfortunately not to take a shot, but when Seth Greenberg says everyone seems to shoot well against Iowa, it seems like this season without the big men in the paint for the Saints, with the loss of Brett Bisping and Emo Silas, it seems like everyone seems to shoot well against the Saints. Saints second to last in points allowed and field goal percentage defense in the MAC. Ogunyemi missed the right-handed layup. Ball goes out of bounds. Off of, no, timeout, timeout. Evan Himes called a timeout before he fell out of bounds. And the Saints will call a timeout here with the 11.25 to go, down 15 to 10. Best position Javion has had all game, but five Peacocks around that layup attempt. Thanks to Trusco Bank for their support of Siena Basketball. Rosen Kiernan is a proud supporter of Siena Basketball. Today's assist of the game is brought to you by UHY LLP, the Capital Region's leading choice for professional tax and business consulting services. 15-10 St. Peter's, 11.25 to go in the first half. Saints, winners of two in a row. St. Peter's has lost four of its last five. Siena's next game will be on Friday at Manhattan. It's a seven o'clock start from Dryde Gymnasium. Then Siena back home on Monday, a week from tomorrow, February the 2nd, to take on Ryder, one of the top teams in the league this year, 7 o'clock Times Union Center. Three of Siena's next four games, actually four of Siena's next five games, on the road. Oliver, left elbow, left side for Himes. Out top, gets it to Oliver, feeds the post, Brandwick, low left block, double team there, kicks it out long, he'll shoot the left corner, three, no good. Rebound tap by Brandwick to an open spot on the court. Quadir Walton runs it down and then shoves Ryan Oliver into the scores table, a foul. Good effort right there by Ryan Oliver going after that loose ball. Welton 
Strong young man. Unfortunately, when he puts his arm up to give you a forearm shiver, you'll feel it. And that time, Ryan Oliver knocked to the ground. 6'8", 230, Quittier Welton. 6'8", might be very generous, but he's definitely 230. Elias Desport back in, along with Rob Poole, who's going out, LeVon Long. 11-11 to go, Saints down 15-10. Oliver takes the inbounds pass near midcourt. Right out of the game right now. Getting a breather, hands it off to Himes. Don't say that very often. No. Third in the Mac in minutes, over 36 a game. Granwick right baseline. At top for Himes with 20 on the shot clock. Saints attacking right to left in the home white. Himes wanted to feed the post. Waiting for Poole to set up position. Instead, swing it around to Brandwick on the low left block. Willem takes it into the middle. Had the ball ripped away and stolen. Chas Patterson feeds it ahead. Tyler Gaskins into the lane. Flips it up from eight and scores. Gaskins with five. Another turnover by the Saints leads to a transition opportunity by the Peacocks. Five turnovers for Siena now. St. Peter's also with five. But a huge advantage in points off of those turnovers. Poole, dipsy do left-handed scoop shot. No good. Gets up gingerly. Desport the rebound. 17-10 St. Peter's. Weish to the left elbow. Stops there. Gets it off for Patterson on the left wing in front of the Siena bench. Screen right from Desport. St. Peter's attacking left to right with a seven-point lead. Straight away Gaskins, both Dominique and Washington out of the game right now. Trevis Weish, the short kind of flip shot. Brandwick the rebound. That high percentage shot, I love. <laughs> Keep taking those, baby. Oliver on the right side, gets a screen left from Brandwick. Left wing, Evan Himes. At top for Oliver, right wing, Brandwick. Feeds the post, Ogunyemi. Single team there on the low right block, skips it left corner to Himes, dribbles into the left elbow, out top Oliver, wide open, three-pointer is good! Great basketball right there by Evan Himes. Got the dribble penetration, got to the paint, and Ryan Oliver had all day long to shoot that, and that's exactly what Ryan Oliver needed. He has been in a shooting slump. John Dunn will call a timeout. Oliver came into the game one for his last 16 from three-point range over the last eight games, and that one make came against Maris last game. He's now one for two, maybe snapping out of a, really a month-long slump. Boy, the Siena coaching staff hopes so. Because Ryan's playing good basketball in all other facets, you know, but, but he's a shooter, and when he doesn't score for this team, that's when Jimmy Patos is gonna look to other guys to see if they can produce. Because like you and I have mentioned several times, you can think of a million factors that affect the game of basketball. It still comes down to one criteria as far as who wins and who loses, who scores more points. And Ryan Oliver right there, a much needed three point field goal for the team and for himself. 17-13 St. Peter's into the game for the first time for the Peacock. 6'7 freshman from Baltimore, Rodney Hawkins. Six points, was a mid-season transfer, became eligible at mid-season. He's a transfer from Delaware State, just like Desi Washington. Travis Weish on the right side, out top for Hawkins. Boy, that coach must be angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> St. Peter's uh, AAA team, apparently. John Dunn, I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> the AAA squad of the Peacocks. Desport, <laughs> right corner for Weish. Down low, Hawkins, shot blocked from behind, athletically by Ogunyemi. Pull the loose ball. Himes right to left into the front court. Himes on the left wing. We'll great, stop there. Great help defense because Evan Himes was being posted up so that that block shot was from behind as Evan was between the player and the basket, which doesn't always bode well. Long left baseline, has the ball ripped out, has the shot blocked, ball's loose, Oliver's got it on the right side. Out top to Himes with 12 on the shot clock. 8.45 to go, Peacocks by four. Himes turns on the Jets and just body checked by Gaskins who picks up the foul. Ten. Into the game, Dominique and Welton. 10 seconds on the shot clock, and how many times in Evan Hyde's career has he had the basketball late in the shot clock and been asked to make a play? A lot. I would say a couple thousand times. <laughs> yes, yes. And that may not even be exaggerated. <laughs> Marquis right back into the game after what for him is an extended breather, probably two or three minutes of game action for Wright that he's been out. Oliver checks out. The foul was on Gaskins, his first 17-13 Peacocks with 8.40 to go. St. Peter's has led most of the way. Another turnover. Weish into the front court, three on one alley-oop. Dominique hammers it home. Another turnover for the Saints, that time Marquise Wright in the transition offense. A gift to the offensively challenged St. Peter's team. 61 point average coming into the game and already they have 19. 
Doesn't get much easier than that. 19-13, Himes with the ball left side. Left corner, Poole will fire a three and score. Three. Rob Poole's first three of the game. Picking up where he left off against Maris. 19-16, Saints trail. Amazingly enough, the Saints are only down three. It seems like St. Peter's has really dominated this game and or the Saints have not played very well offensively. Weiss shot top right side for Washington. St. Peter's attacking left to right. Washington left wing to Patterson, out top to Washington. Back to Patterson, he'll fake the pass, shoot the three, no good, in and out, rebound, Long swoops in for it. He's got it, outlets right, sinks on the run, right to left. Right fumbling the dribble, right side for Himes, he'll shoot a three, count it. Evan Himes gets on the board and ties the game at 19. Well, you gotta love the three-point field goal. We know the coaching staff does back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back three-point field goals for the Saints. They've drawn even in what has, won, has been a subpar first half thus far, but they are tied. Saints now four for seven from downtown. Washington, left side to Patterson, thought about another three, instead thinks better of it, into the corner for Weish. Left elbow, Dominique, triple team, lost it. Ball's loose, Himes has it for Siena. 7.05 to go, Saints can take the lead here. Only led two to nothing in this game, have trailed ever since. Jimmy Patzo's moving around very well on the sidelines. I think it's because of those Under Armour sneakers. No tie today for Coach Patzo's. Pool falls to the ground and it's tied up. Ah, uh, jump ball. Presumably, yes, jump ball. And a timeout brought to you by All-Star Wine and Spirits. Peacock's possession when we come back. Siena 19, St. Peter's 19 on the Talk 1300. Siena Basketball Radio Network. You are listening to Talk 1300. ATM, gas bill, debit card. School loans, new shoes, oil change. No matter how you use your money, when you bank at Key, we reward you. Golf clubs, sunscreen. Because Key Bank Relationship Rewards earns you points for everyday banking transactions. Direct deposit, then direct withdrawal. So to unlock your reward possibilities. Flying to Florida without paying for flying to Florida. Visit a Key Bank branch today or log on to key.com slash get rewards. Key Bank, unlock your possibilities. Certain restrictions apply for full details. Travel safely, comfortably, and in style this holiday season. Premier Transportation is here to handle all your luxury ground transportation needs. We offer a wide variety of luxury vehicles, including sedans, SUVs, stretch limousines, luxury passenger vans, mini coaches, party coaches, and large coaches equipped with restrooms. Premier Transportation has the reputation and experience to provide unparalleled service. Call us today at 459-6123 or visit us on the web at premierlimo.com. You're listening to Siena Basketball on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. The Saints are home today, playing the Peacocks of St. Peter's. Now, back to the game. Saints and St. Peter's tied at 19. You look at the stats and you say each team has seven turnovers, okay. But St. Peter's has 14 points off of those turnovers. St. Peter's with none, or Siena with none. Yeah, St. Peter's has always been a team where you have to say 50% of their offense is fueled by their defense. And they have turned those turnovers into transition opportunities. And St. Peter's, you know, they've always been an athletic team. They're not the biggest team. You know, Welton at six foot eight, Dominique at six foot seven. That might be generous for both those players, but they are tough. As we just saw, Rob Poole with a turnover in the low post. As soon as he went to the floor, there were four St. Peter's teams on the basketball. 19-19 the score, 6.55 to go. Tyler Gaskins will inbound the ball for Fields, who's back in. The Albany Academy product, Jamel Fields trapped in the backcourt, bounces it to Gaskins across the timeline, left to right, takes it top of the key to the left elbow. Fields gets away from Himes, lost the ball, and a foul. Well, that contact was called. <laughs> Evan Himes, the foul, his first. We've seen bodies flying. We've seen bodies go up and be knocked off their, their path. And that time, a little touch reach foul from behind on Evan Himes. St. Peter's inbounds the ball, baseline left, gets it in for Fields, drives left baseline, path to the basket, reverse layups up and in. Tough drive right there by Fields, taking it right to Evan Himes. Gives St. Peter's the lead, 21-19 with 6.25 to go. Right, right to left into the front court, takes it near side left. In the home wide, out top for Himes. They're joined by Poole, Long, and Ogunyemi. Siena's starting, no, not starting five. Brandwick out, Himes in. Right, left corner. 15 to shoot. Right, 
with 10 on the shot clock. Saints doing nothing here, eight to shoot, long left wing. Puts it on the deck to the left elbow, spins to the middle of the lane, tough eight footer, got the roll. Such a soft touch by the left-handed Levon Long. Even though he dribble drove to his right, he somehow turns his body so he can turn off the right shoulder and get the little baby left-handed jump hook. 5.45 to go, first half, tied at 21. Fields on the right side, out top for Dominique, left wing Tyler Gaskins. Straight away for Washington, left alone for a moment, right side to Fields. Left-handed pass to Gaskins, slices into the lane, short shot is up and in. Tough contested shot right there by Gaskins, athletic move as he kind of jump hopped into the lane, up and over Levon Long. Seven points for Gaskins, averages nine and a half, gives St. Peter's the lead, 23-21. Poole on the right side, out top to right. Left wing, Himes to Poole off a screen. Rob takes it into the lane, dumps it to a cutting Ogunyemi, banks it off glass, no good. Rebound, Dominique. Good pass by Poole. Ogunyemi, he's got to finish that. Not doing well with the layups. Fields feeds the post. Welton spins low left, blocked under the basket. Welton, fadeaway, hook shot is up and in. Somehow muscled that shot over Javion Ogunyemi. Four points for Welton, and St. Peter's takes a 25-21 lead with 4.45 to go. Himes left side. He'll shoot the open three. Off the back iron, no good. Rebound swooped in for and controlled by Quadir Welton. St. Peter's on the run, two on two. Washington on the right side. Washington all the way to the basket and draws the foul. 4.35 to go. Peacocks by four going to the line. That is just not consistent with the way the game has been called. Marquise Wright doesn't like the call. That is just a bad call. Offensive player driving to the basket. We've got guys in the paint being knocked over. They make that call in transition. To the line, Desi Washington, an excellent 84% free throw shooter. Best on the team, he makes the first. Randwick and Oliver in. Ogunyemi and Himes out. Jazz Patterson and Rodney Hawkins back in for St. Peter's. Washington with over 1,400 career points between Delaware State and St. Peter's, and over 1,000 points at St. Peter's alone. He's been a terrific player for them for three years now. Thank you, Delaware State. <laughs> Missed the second free throw. Rebound goes out of bounds. It's saved back into St. Peter's. Another possession here. 5-0 run for the Peacocks. Washington on the right side. Right elbow, Desport. At top to Washington. Jimmy Page gets up to check into the game for the first time. All because of a missed box out and a missed opportunity on a missed foul shot. Fields, free throw line, Desport. Takes it down the left side of the lane, banks it off glass, too strong, rebound tapped to the corner. Desport's got it again. At top for Fields, four minutes left to go. St. Peter's leads 26-21. Patterson feeds the post, Desport. Guarded by Long, backs him in, low left block, knocked away, Desport gets it back, hook shot, air ball, rebound right, he'll spin away from traffic. Right races into the front court, right down the center, right all the way to the basket, lost it and was fouled. And a timeout brought to you by All-Star Wine and Spirits. 3.46 left to go. Jamel fields the foul, his second. Peacocks 26, Saints 21 on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. You are listening to Talk 1300. Hi, everybody. Robert Lee here for two great teams, Siena Saints Basketball and Napa Auto Parts, proud sponsor of the Saints. The Saints deliver top performance on the court. Your Napa Auto Parts store helps your vehicle deliver top performance on the road. With access to more than 400,000 quality parts and accessories and friendly Napa know-how, your Napa store is the stop that will keep you going this season and year-round. Go Napa and go Saints. Hi, Saints fans. I'm Guy Madalone, founder and CEO of GTM Payroll Services in Clifton Park. As a Siena alum, I'm pleased that GTM is a proud sponsor of Siena Basketball. With almost 20 years, we have some great offerings. GTM provides comprehensive payroll, human resources, and insurance services to hundreds of businesses. Today, we have received over 30,000 payroll checks every week for fans like you. Trying to get your company's payroll done before heading to a Saints team? Put GTM on your team. Call us today at 373-4111 or visit gtm.com and discover how GTM can help your team score. You're listening to Siena Basketball on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. The Saints are home today, playing the Peacocks of St. Peter's. Now, back to the game. St. Peter's shooting 58% from the field. Siena at 44%. Both teams scorching hot from beyond the arc. Saints four out of eight. Peacocks three for four. 
not a lot of rebounds to be had with all these made shots. St. Peter's plus three on the glass. Each team with seven, seven turnovers, but points off of turnovers. St. Peter's 16, Siena none. Individually, Marquise Wright leading the way with six points. Six Saints have scored. Nobody else has more than four. Dominique, seven points for the Peacocks, along with Gaskin, seven points. Washington has six. Trevis Weish has not scored, but has five assists and four steals in only 10 minutes. He could be on his way to a steals, assists, double-double if he played another 20 minutes or so. 0 for 1 from the field. Pool, pass knocked away, off of a referee's foot, saves it inbounds, Weish shovels it to Hawkins, no, Gaskins who lays it in. Tough break, that ball was gonna go out of bounds, but it went off one of the official's foots, stayed inbounds, leads to a St. Peter's basket. Gaskins with nine points. 28-21, 7-0 run for the Peacocks. Right between the circles, left side to Oliver. Takes it over to his right, right wing for right. At top for Poole. Shakes his defender, takes it to the basket, lost it, and was fouled. It's only the fifth foul against St. Peter's. Siena remarkably only has two with 3.17 to go in the first half. Rob Poole will go to the line. At first I did not think they were gonna give him a shooting foul. I definitely thought it was. Good job of Rob Poole making a quick move going to his right past his defender. Weish the foul, his first. Poole to the line, team best 84% from the stripe. Makes the first. Rob, with his four points today, has now moved up another spot on the school's all-time scoring list. With 1,348 points, he has passed Steve Walters, class of 76, for 16th all-time. Getting into rarefied air as Poole makes them both. He's got five. Saints trail 28-23. Rob needs to average about eight and a half points a game if Siena plays the minimum number of games the rest of the way to finish in the top 10. Washington as St. Peter's breaks the press very easily. Washington, left corner for Dominique. Left wing for Washington, out top to Weiss. Swing it around right side, Gaskins fires a three, no good. Rebound, Jimmy Page for Siena. Outlets to right, pushes ahead to Himes. Full speed to the basket, lays it up and in. And so fast, you didn't think the Saints had an advantage until they gave the ball to Evan Himes who just blows past the St. Peter's defense for a layup. Love those transition opportunities. Four straight for Siena, 28-25, alley-oop. Welton lays it in easily. Six points for Welton. And it is 30 to 25, with 2.40 to go. Poole left side, he'll launch a three. Missed it, and before the shot, a moving screen on Jimmy Page, a foul. Another well, turnover. Well, the player fell to the ground, so it had to be an illegal screen. Regardless, it's a turnover with 2.33 to go. Ogunyemi in, and Page out. We mentioned St. Peter's allowing only 61 points a game. Saints have 25 right now, about on pace for that. I got a long way to go to get to that 70 point mark we talked about. Washington, left side for Gaskins. 3-2 zone for Siena. Right side to Washington, relatively quiet with just six points so far. Gaskins has nine, feed the post Welton, takes Ogunyemi to the basket, lays it up and draws the foul. He'll go to the line, shot was no good. Ogunyemi the foul, his first. To the line, Quadir Welton. Quadir Welton is a 53% free throw shooter. Interesting fact about Welton, I learned from their game notes as he made the first. His uncle is 16-year NBA veteran Rashid Wallace. Always a volatile type, a four-time All-Star and an NBA champion with the Pistons. Welton made one of two, and Welton is Wallace's nephew. Seven points for Welton, 31-25, six-point lead. Right, right elbow to Ogunyemi, left elbow, hands it off to Poole. Rob, top of the key, kicks it out to right. He'll shoot from 17. No good off the right side of the rim. Rebound volleyed off the backboard and out of bounds to Siena. Good work on the glass by Ogunyemi, keeping the possession. Yeah, nothing has come easy for the Saints in the paint. And Javion doing a good job of just muscling those rebounds off the backboard to keep the possession alive. Long into the game for Page. 
Saints down 31-25. They get it out to an open right. He'll take it down the lane, throw it out of bounds, a turnover. Wanted to get it to Ogunyemi, but if Javion was about eight feet tall, he could have caught that. Unfortunately, he's not. It's a turnover. Good look, bad pass. Washington right side, out top for Weish, left wing Gaskins. Straight away for Weish with a fresh shot clock and 1.45 to go. Weish hands it off to Washington. Hasn't looked for a shot much. In fact, he's only two for two from the field is Washington. For St. Peter's leading scorer. Washington muscles it up in traffic, had it blocked, gets it back. Still 13 to shoot. Straight away, Weish. Left side for Gaskin, splits the defender. Down low to Welton, he's fouled. He'll go to the line for two. With six on the shot clock. Evan Himes, his second foul of the game. 124 to go, Walton back to the line for two. With St. Peter's up by six. St. Peter's with solid wins this year at Rutgers by 18 points. They won at Cornell, a team that beat Siena pretty handily here. Wins at Quinnipiac, at Monmouth. One of Monmouth's two league losses came to St. Peter's at Monmouth. Brandwick in for Ogunyemi, Walton missed the first. Coach John Dunn told us before the game, they've been pretty much right in every game. Walton makes one out of two and has eight points. He averages six and a half a game. Seven point lead, 120 to go. Right, left side to Himes. To right. Feeds the post pool, low right block. Rob backing in Gaskins, double team. Hacked at, bounces it outside for Long in the right corner with 17 to shoot. Long bulldozing into the lane, couldn't get the roll. Rebound Dominique. St. Peter's a run, Trevis Weish. The sophomore point guard trying to extend a seven point lead. Weish top of the key, left side Gaskins into the lane to a cutting Dominique, lays it up, no good. Rebound Dominique on the weak side, kicks it out Washington. St. Peter's a reset. Near side, Gaskins jump shot is short. Rebound, volleyed up a couple of times. Pool has it go off his head, he's got it. With 40 seconds left. Five second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Saints on a long scoring drought down seven. Himes, left corner three, no good, short. Rebound, off of who, out of bounds. It'll stay with Siena. 31 seconds left, shot clock is turned off. That would have been a nice basket right there by Evan Himes. Saints in a scoring drought like you mentioned. St. Peter's on a mini 4-0 run. They've had a few runs this game already. 31 seconds left, right corner Himes as Oliver is checked in. Saints will hold for one, attacking right to left with 23 seconds left, down by seven. Siena will trail at the half. Right near side left. Right dribbling the ball with 13 seconds left to go. Right starts the offense with eight. Picks up the dribble, right side to Himes with six. Evan gets ahead of steam, blows by Welton, lays it up, blocked by Quadir Welton. Loose ball, Weish, up ahead, Gaskins launches a 30-footer off the front of the rim. It would have been no good anyways. It was before the clock, or after the clock ran out. That was a technical foul. Coach Patso's just giving it to one of the officials right now. I'm not sure if he just got teed up. They blew a whistle as Coach Patso's was incensed that Himes was not given a foul there, and it's a technical foul. Second time this season, Jimmy Patso's has gotten a technical foul on the way to the locker room. The first one was against UMass. First game of the year. Technical foul, and they'll shoot those right now or after the half. I think they're going to flip a coin and figure it out. I'm not sure if they're going to shoot him right now. As Desi Washington staying on the court, the officials are going to discuss. As Coach Patsos was out at midcourt, screaming at one of the officials. Honestly, I've never heard of two of these officials we have today, so I'm not sure who that was. Uh, but he picked up a tee, and they'll shoot those out of the locker room. Halftime, St. Peter's 32, Siena 25. Halftime show coming up on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. You are listening to Talk 1300.
Alpenhouse is the place to go for all of your skiing, snowboarding, and winter needs. We carry all of your favorite brands like UGG, the North Face, Sorel, Under Armour, Spider, Obermeyer, Patagonia, K2, Vocal, and Carbon, just to name a few. Come see Alpenhouse Ski Shop, conveniently located in Amsterdam and Clifton Park Center, or shop online at alpenhouseskishop.com. You're listening to Siena Basketball on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. Saints are home today, playing the Peacocks of St. Peter's. Now, back to the game. The halftime show is brought to you by MT Bank. St. Peter's leads Siena 32 to 25 at the half. Robert Lee and Tom Herter back with you here. Special guest on our halftime show today, Brenda Wiedeker, class of 2004 from Siena, won a contest last year, uh, or won a, an auction item in which she got to spend some time with the team earlier today. And as part of her punishment for winning that, she has to be on the radio broadcast with us here today. Uh, so Brenda, we appreciate you taking the time. Uh, tell us a little bit about why you feel it's important to support Sienna Athletics. Uh, when you're supporting an athletic organization or anything, it's about the team spirit and about these students. These students aren't out there making money or anything. It's about the school, it's the com camaraderie and everything when it's involved. And it's like, I went to school there. I brought my son at 16 when he was little. We'd sit up in the stands and everything. And it was like a family time for the kids, for, for, for the parents, for the teachers. My professors were always here. That's how my son ended up at St. Ambrose with the nuns that are your rally nuns here. Okay. That's how I ended up finding out what school to go to. But it's a great organization. I love Siena, and I like giving back to it. Uh, Brenda, with so many charitable organizations in the area, you know, you can, a lot of different people vying for, you know, charitable dollars. Why do you include Siena among the, the things you support? It's near and dear to my heart. I went to school there, and it's helped me become the woman that I am. I run an occupational medical practice. I own my own safety training company, and if it wasn't with my roots with Siena, as I grew up going to Siena, I, I wish that they had a master's program. I would have <laughs> got my master's there. I mean, they do now with the accounting, okay. but... Um, so yeah, yeah, I love Siena. It's my home. I'm from Illinois. Okay. But this was my home when I got here, so that's why I give back to Siena. We'll ask you this: Do you have a favorite Siena athletics moment? Uh, that's a tough one. I know there's a lot. This one, this one being somewhere near 220th or 221st, probably. Well, you know what? I get excited. I see those guys. Brett's on the um, on. on Brett's sitting on the bench. Yeah. I see, I see it in his eyes. He wants to be out there, and it's like when you look at these guys, and that's all they want to do is be on the floor and make a difference. That's what I like. I like making the difference. I like it, even though they're sitting there, or when they're on there and they're making the baskets. You can almost feel it in your heart when you're down there watching them. You know, it's like I'm so proud of them, and they're not even my kids. That's why it makes it easy when I help them fundraise. Outstanding. Brenda, we appreciate you taking the time to join us here today. We appreciate your support on behalf of the entire Siena Athletics family, and we look forward to many great years down the road. Oh, by all means. Thank you. Brenda Wiedeker, Siena Class of 2004, joining us here on the Halftime Report. Tom and I will be back with the Halftime Stats. Take a look at Around the Mac. When we come back, the score St. Peter's 32, Siena 25, on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. You are listening to Talk 1300. I'm Rob McCormick, President and CEO of Trusco Bank, the presenting sponsor of Siena Basketball. 
You can trust that Siena prepares their students to be the leaders of tomorrow, just as you can trust in the strength of Trusco Bank. For over 100 years, Trusco Bank has been financially strong and will continue to be so into the future by using core banking principles and safe lending practices. I welcome you to stop into any of our hometown locations. We offer modern convenience with old school service. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Capital Off-Track Betting is the player's home right here in the Capital District. At Capital OTB, the player is first. Capital OTB, where they offer over 60 branch locations, including easy bets, along with photo bet and internet wagering. Capital OTB is all about making wagering easy. And at Capital OTB, there's much more than just placing a wager. Capital Off-Track Betting is a big part of the Capital District. At Capital OTB, they are working with multiple counties in the update area, helping to provide jobs and benefits to the counties that they work. Also, Capital Off-Track Betting is constantly informing Capital OTB understands that information is vital and constantly provides advice, updating track odds by offering live virtual tote boards and payments. Capital Off-Track Betting also offers multiple channels of live streaming, past performances, online handicapping contests, and top flight handicap analysis. Capital Off-Track Betting also has up-to-date information 24-7 on their website at CapitalOTB.com. For all your racing information, head to CapitalOTB.com. Does your school's fitness area need an equipment upgrade? Are you a nonprofit who wants to create a space to help improve the health of those you serve? Vet Fitness and iHeartMedia are teaming up with local area businesses to help one lucky winner reinvent fitness at their location. Here's how it works. Go to ExtremeGymMakeover.com to apply. Submit photos, videos, and tell us your story to show why you need an Extreme Gym Makeover. Details online now at ExtremeGymMakeover.com. You're listening to Siena Basketball on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. The Saints are home today, playing the Peacocks at St. Peter's. Now, back to the game. Halftime here at the Times Union Center. The score, St. Peter's 32 and Siena 25. M&T Bank Halftime Show rolls on. Let's take a look at our first half stats. Siena shot the ball 39% from the field. St. Peter's 52%. This is a St. Peter's team that normally shoots 41%. St. Peter's made their first three three-pointers. They finished up three for five. Siena four out of nine. Not a lot of free throws in this game. St. Peter's three for six. Saints three for three. Peacocks plus two on the glass. Difference in the game, honestly. The turnover battle and points off of those turnovers. St. Peter's seven turnovers. Siena with 10. Points off of turnovers. St. Peter's 20. Siena none. Yeah, a huge stat in this game. And the fact that Siena's not shooting well, part of that is, is they're not getting a lot of shots up because they're turning it over so much. And then the ones they do are contested. And the Saints are just not able to run their fluid offense right now. Credit the St. Peter's defense in the first half. The tempo, the game has been dictated by the St. Peter's defense, something the Saints need to switch in the second half. If they don't, they might score 50 points. And as you know, Robert, that doesn't get it done at this level. Individually, St. Peter's being led by Tyler Gaskins with nine points. Whatier Welch with eight points. Marvin Dominique, seven points, four rebounds. Six points for Desi Washington. He's only attempted three shots, making an impact despite not scoring. Travis Weish, no points, a rebound, seven assists, and four steals. Only one turnover. Weish has been in control. He really has. You know, he's. He's a smaller point guard that has, he knows when to push it in transition. And in this first half, he's done a great job of getting to the rim and then dumping it off for a streaking teammate. So Weish has had an impressive first half. And he's not filling the stat sheet up as far as scoring, but he's doing those other little things and the steals and the assists are huge. Marquise Wright leading Siena with six points. Rob Poole has five, one out of four from the field. Evan Himes with five. LeVon Long has four. Oliver made a three. No other huge numbers. Nobody's got more than two rebounds. Nobody has more than two assist blocks or steals. First half stats. Take a look at scores from around the MAC. Halftime in the two other games going on right now. It is Manhattan 40, Monmouth 33. That's at Manhattan. Also halftime, Fairfield 26, Marist 25. That's at Marist. Game later on today, Madison Square Garden. Niagara takes on Iona. 4.30 start after the Duke-St. John's game. 
The entire MAC will take three days off. We'll reconvene on Thursday. Ryder at St. Peter's. Friday, Siena at Manhattan. Quinnipiac at Canisius. Marist at Niagara. Monmouth at Fairfield. Saturday, St. Peter's at Iona. As Iona will get about five days off between games. Max standings, Iona and Manhattan are in Monmouth tied at seven and two. Ryder seven and three. Canisius fourth place, six and four. Tied for fifth, Siena and Manhattan five and four. Quinnipiac has won five of six. They're five and five. Fairfield four and five. St. Peter's three and six. Niagara two and seven. Marist zero oh and nine. We didn't get a chance to mention it in the first half. Siena's wins and losses this year have been almost directly related to their opponent's record in relation to 500. If the team is at 500 or below, Siena is five and one against them. If they're a winning team above 500, Saints are 0 and three. Well, not again, I hate to be the conspiracy theorist, but I think there's some leverage to this thought process. It also affects their wins losses if you play on a Sunday and the team that you're playing has had more time off, more time to prepare. That's happened, I believe, in conference at least three times. And today being a case. Today being the case as St. Peter's last played Wednesday. And the Saints played Friday night against Marist. And especially when you got guys with injuries, Rob Poole nursing the ankle injury, coming back. You know, it's just tough. And, and I believe what's the Saints record on those games? They're 0-2 in those games when they played on a Sunday and their opponent hasn't played before that. And we mentioned Siena has not beaten a team with a winning record in the MAC. Eight of their last 10 games will be a team against teams with winning records. Yeah, or 500 in the MAC. So they've got to start doing that at some point. And that's overall. I mean, the, I think the only team Siena's beaten with a winning record is St. Bonaventure. Would that be a good guess? I believe that's true. I mean, when, when you have a record that's below 500, you know, the, the wins don't come easily. So the Saints are just trying to figure out ways to win with the injuries that they've sustained this season. That'll do it for the m and Bank Halftime Show. Second half coming up. St. Peter's leads Siena 32-25. The Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. You are listening to Talk 1300. Experience the style and elegance of Stonegate, a luxury apartment community designed by the Rossetti family. Stonegate, conveniently located in North Greenbush, just minutes off Interstate 90. And Stonegate has everything you need to make living easy. With six unique open floor plans, Stonegate is ideal for entertaining as well as daily living. Whether you're a busy professional or retired, why not enjoy maintenance-free living at Stonegate? Now open daily, 11 to 3, including weekends. Rossetti Properties, building communities you call home. Love where you live. For more, visit liveatstonegate.com. The role of IT in higher education is evolving, and no one knows that better than Anise. We've been a technical colleague to colleges and universities across New York State since 1970. With solutions like wireless, virtual desktop, and visual security, we help campuses stay safe, mobile, and on the cutting edge. I'm Ray Appy, President and CEO of Anise. Let us help you create a connected learning environment for today's connected generation. Visit us at anise.com forward slash higher ed. That's A-N-N-E-S-E dot com. And go Saints. Keeping their members healthy through affordable, reliable health care benefits is what CDPHP is all about. How do they do it? It's simple. They put their members at the heart of everything they do, from the caring, personalized attention they deliver to the complimentary wellness programs that make staying healthy easier. CDPHP is committed to making their members number one. It's the kind of service that goes beyond what your average insurance company might offer, but it's all in a day's work at CDPHP. More than an insurance plan, it's a health plan. CDPHP, a plan for life. Learn more at cdphp.com. This winter, leave the driving to Amtrak. Whether you're traveling for business or pleasure, Amtrak is simply the easiest and most convenient way to travel. Right now, you can enjoy a 15% off discount between any two stations within New York State when you visit ilovenewyork.com to book your ticket. And don't forget Amtrak operates more than 300 trains a day and services more than 500 destinations spanning across the country. Visit Amtrak.com for more information. Amtrak, enjoy the journey. You're listening to Seattle Basketball on the Talk 1300 Seattle Basketball Radio Network. The Saints are home today, playing the Peacocks of St. Peter's. Now let's head courtside for the call of today's game. Just about set to start the second half. Robert Lee, Tom Hurd with you. Brendan Teenan, our producer, back in the studio. Brendan working hard and doing a great job on a Sunday afternoon. Now, Coach Patso's got a technical foul before 
the second half, or before the teams went to the locker room. So Desi Washington will shoot two free throws to start the second half, and he makes the first. Coach Patsos got teed up just before the teams went into the locker room. Second time that's happened this season, and Washington will make them pay with two free throws. Eight points for Washington and a nine-point lead, 34 to 25, matching the biggest lead of the game. Saints will have the ball down nine now as we start the second half. Brandwick, Oganyemi, pool long and right, starting five. Seats into the front court, left to right. Right on the far side, left, gets a screen from Oganyemi. Zigzags down the lane, dipsy doo lays it up, no good, he was fouled. I don't know, but that call just seems entirely contrary to the way the first half was called. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a little bit of a bailout because I'm not sure Marquise Wright was gonna make that shot if he attempted it 100 times once and yet he's rewarded by going to the line for two shots, and of course he misses the first one. The Travis, rim, Travis yeah. Weish, his second foul of the game. This is where the other team would yell, the rim does not lie, or the basket does not lie, and he, by missing that foul shot and not getting two points, he did get one, though. Makes one out of two. Marquise with seven points to lead Siena, full court press, 34-26. Saints down eight, Weish trapped. Splits the double, lost the ball, gets it back. Now all alone is Quadir Welton who will lay it in. They broke the press and there was nobody back. 10 points for Welton. Biggest lead of the game, 36-26. Well, Brandwood came up because he thought the Saints had the basketball. That ball was loose and amongst about four Saints and they just could not come up with the loose balls going to the Peacocks. Right, just jacks a three, it's no good. Rebound Washington. Right, an early three and the shot clock never passed the ball. Washington with the ball left side. Saints down 10 here with 19.20 to go. You don't like those one-touch possessions. Weish, left side for Washington, up fakes. Right side for Gaskins, into the corner for Weish in front of the St. Peter's bench. Right elbow, Welton, at top Gaskins, left side Washington. Looking to feed the post for Dominique, instead puts it on the floor, he'll shoot a three. Off the right side of the rim, no good. Rebound, Oganyemi, pushes for right into the front court, left to right. Marquise turns on the Jets, zigzags down the lane, lost it. oganyemi has got it, muscles it up, way off the mark, but he was fouled as he initiated the contact there. Again, you could almost say there was about eight plays in the first half that were the exact same thing that weren't called, and yet the Saints are rewarded with that foul. Quadir Welton, the foul, his second. Oganyemi to the line, a 52% free throw shooter. Javion has not scored yet today, and he makes the first. Oganyemi, 11 points, five rebounds against Marist, averaging nine and four this season. That was his first point of the game. Former flying horse from Troy High School. Makes one out of two, true to his average. Pull the rebound, gets it to right. Sienna will reset down 36-27, 18.45 to go. Right to Oganyemi, left wing. Hands it off to Long. Thought about the three, off to right. 16 on the shot clock. Long shakes free, shoots the right wing three. No good, Oganyemi held on the rebound, a foul. No, no, foul on Oganyemi. Holding off. His second. Eighteen twenty-three to go. Thirty-six twenty-seven. Peacocks. And the three just caught. Well, Weish. They, they just showed it on the scoreboard above, and the fans got even angrier. Washington dumps it down low, knocked away, nice stolen. Play. Brandwick stole it back into Pool, who feeds it ahead for right to a trailing pool, thought about the three, down the lane, pool flips it up for five, short, rebounded athletically by Dominique. Saints down nine, and really unable to get it going here in the second half so far, two minutes in, Welton backs in, kicks it out for Gaskins, thought about the three, takes it down the lane, kicks it out, Weish. Down the right side of the lane, all the way into the basket, ball kicked out of bounds by Long, no, off of Weish, Siena basketball. <laughs> They won't call the kick, they'll just call the reflection, the deflection, which was a kick into the leg of Weish, went out of bounds, Siena ball. 17.40 to go, St. Peter's leads 36-27. Oganyemi top of the key to right. Marquise to pool, fouled on the three-point shot. 
fouled on the three by Desi Washington. A poor foul and a chance for Sienna to get points. Good hang time right there by Rob Poole because he double pumped long enough to draw the contact and get himself to the line. Smart play by the senior. Poole will go to the line where he's two for two. He is second in the MAC in three point shooting, 84%. That's five points so far today. Is one out of five from the field as he makes the first. Chance for Poole to settle into a little bit of a rhythm here from the line. In the last six games he's played, now he missed a couple of games with an ankle injury. Makes the second. He has scored at least 17 points in every one of those games. He's really been on a tear. Averaging over 18 a game and shooting 50% from downtown in that stretch. And trying to get three the hard way here with three from the line. Does so. Eight points for Poole, much needed. Saints down 36-30, 17-30 to go. Crowd coming to life a little bit here. Washington playing catch with Weish, left side for Gaskins. At top, Dominique, right side, Washington. Right wing for Weish to Washington. Splits two defenders, kicks it out left corner, Gaskins. Takes it left baseline, back out to Washington. Wide open, left wing three, in and out. Rebounded by Ogunyemi, 17.05 to go. Saints down six, right into the front court, right. To Poole, off to right. Sienna will set up the offense with under 17 minutes to go down by six. Oliver on the right wing, guarded loosely by Washington. Swing it around left side, Poole. Straight away for right. Sienna floor general. Holding the ball there with 10 on the shot clock. Feeds the post, Ogunyemi. Faces on Welton, backs him in, double team, kicks it out. Right, left elbow jumper, way off the mark. Rebound. St. Peter's, Quidir Welton. Into the front court, Weish. Takes the top of the key, nice feed down low for Dominique, who was fouled. And Dominique has had to work hard today. He and Levon Long have had a good battle. First foul on Long, 16-27 to go. 36-30, Peacocks. They get it into the right corner for Patterson, who just checked in. Patterson hounded by Himes, almost dribbled it out of bounds. Off to Weish, left side to Gaskins. Feeds the post, Welton, single team. Gets it to a cutting, Weish, who lays it in beautifully. Beautiful pass by Welton. 38-30, nice offense there by the Peacocks. Privilege of defenders of the Saints fell asleep, and Weish gets his first bucket of the game. Two points for Weish and an eight-point lead. Himes running the point here with right on the bench. Long takes it left wing, Long left baseline, galloping to the basket, awkward sequence there, out of bounds. To St. Peter's and a timeout brought to you by All-Star Wine and Spirits. 15.50 left to go. St. Peter's 38, Sienna 30 on the Talk 1300 Sienna Basketball Radio Network. You are listening to Talk 1300. Hi, I'm Scott from NH Kelman Scrap Recycling. Here to remind you, no matter what you call your recyclables, whether you call it old trash, junk, or just miscellaneous stuff, if you bring it to NH Kelman, it means extra cash in your pocket. Take a moment and look through your garage, attic, or cellar for old metal items. You'll be surprised at what they're worth. Recycle and put extra cash in your pocket. It's a win-win for everyone. NH Kelman Scrap Recycling. Open daily 7 till 5, Saturday 7 till noon. I'm Rob McCormick, President and CEO of Trusco Bank, the presenting sponsor of Siena Basketball. You can trust that Siena prepares their students to be the leaders of tomorrow, just as you can trust in the strength of Trusco Bank. For over 100 years, Trusco Bank has been financially strong and will continue to be so into the future by using core banking principles and safe lending practices. I welcome you to stop into any of our hometown locations. We offer modern convenience with old school service. Member FDIC, Equal Housing You're listening to Siena Basketball on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. The Saints are home today, playing the Peacocks at St. Peter's. Now, back to the game. We're back here at the Times Union Center where St. Peter's leads 38 to 30 with 15.50 left to go. We mentioned at the top of the last broadcast against Maris that Siena had split all four of its weekends so far in the MAC. Beat Quinnipiac, lost to Ryder. Beat Fairfield, lost to Iona. 
beat Niagara, lost to Fairfield. Lost to Canisius, beat Niagara, so they switched it around. Beat Marist, but in three of those four weekends, Siena won the first game and then lost the second game. Less rest, who knows what, but Siena, if they can't rally here, will split the MAC weekend for the fifth time in a row. Well, and it's also sometimes who you play. I mean, it's, you know, you could play Iona on the second day and you may not beat them 10 out of 10 times. Yeah. The way they play offensively, so. Steele, right in the front court, kicks it out for Poole, he'll launch a three, in and out. Saint stole it on the inbounds and it goes out of bounds to St. Peter's, missed opportunity. That would have been a big boost if that shot would have fallen. Good steal by Marquise Wright, good find, but Rob Poole just couldn't convert. Wright was about five feet from the basket and threw it back out for a three-pointer. They'll trap Weish again. This time the press broken easily. Chas Patterson racing into the front court, three on two. Patterson to Desport, wide open, missed the left-handed layup, missed the putback, break for Siena. Wright's got it. He'll run into the front court, three on three, right down the center. Bounces it to Poole in the left corner, drives left baseline, galloping to the rack, free throw line, jumper, LeBon Long, yes. Good basketball right there. The extra pass by Rob Poole. LeBon Long converts. That took the Saints almost eight minutes in between field goals. The last one at the three minute mark in the first half. 38-32 St. Peter's. Saints down by six. Still in this game despite the fact the feeling they've really been outplayed for a majority of it. Patterson with the ball left side, feeds the post Dominique. Backs in long, knocked away. Out of bounds, off of Himes. Stays with the Peacock, so 14.55 to go. Washington and Welton back in. Desport, Patterson out for head coach John Dunn, a former Siena assistant back in the Louis Orr days and before that as well for a year, I believe. Six and 10 all time yes. against he under, Siena. He was under two coaches, correct. Not a lot of guys could do that. Tells you also what type of guy he is. John Dunn, just a nice, good guy. Washington pulls up and buries the three. 11 points for Desi Washington. It's a nine point lead, 41-32. Off the ball screen at the three point line, he converts. Heating up now, Washington averages 14 a game. Pool at the left elbow, guarded by Gaskins, runs him over, good flop by Gaskins, offensive foul. Rob Pool his first. Pool cleared out with his arm, Gaskins flopped, and a foul, Peacocks lead it by nine. The combination of the two made it look like a felony, and I think that may have been a slight misdemeanor. Weiss trapped in the backcourt, press broken very easily. Three on two, Dominique to the basket, banks it high off the window and in. Ooh, tough shot, up and over Javion, who did a good job contesting. Biggest lead of the game, 43-32 St. Peter's. Right between the circles. Right side for Himes. Dribbles and is fouled on the hand check by Desi Washington, his second. Evan should do that every single time. Into the game, Ryan Oliver replacing Rob Poole. 14 10 to go. Saints down by 11 here. Trying for their first three game winning streak of the season, but they'll have to rally. Wright takes the inbounds pass, shoots a three, it's no good. Rebounded by Gaskins. Outlets to Weish. Peacock's looking to run. Washington on the right side. Oh, and he's fouled by Long. He dove into him and on a long 18 point jump shot, 18 foot jump shot. Long, his second to put Washington at the line for two. Smart play. Desi Washington to the line for two shots where he is three out of four. Maurice White getting up to check into the game for the first time. Washington makes the first. White did not play in the first half. Also in Jimmy Page, Long and Himes out. Gaskins out, Patterson back in for St. Peter's. White averaging two points in 10 minutes a game, sophomore from Baltimore. Second shot for Washington is good. 13 points now to lead all scorers, and it's a 13 point lead, 45 to 32 with under 14 minutes to go. Saints have been outscored 13 to seven in this second half. Oganyemi faces on the left baseline to White at the free throw line, dribbles in, kicks it to right on the right baseline. Not a lot of proven scorers out there right now for Siena. Oliver, top of the key for Wright. In fact, the highest scorer on the team right now out there is Marquise Wright. It's more of a distributor more often than not. Oganyemi, a threat, takes it to the basket, muscles it up, too strong, no good. Dominique, the athletic rebound. Dominique clears out, gets it to Weish. St. Peter's starting to pull away here with 13.20 to go. Look out, Dominique a three. 
It's good. Marvin Dominique with 12, and the lead is 16, 48 to 32. Well, to your point, the Saints are having a tough time scoring, and they don't have a lineup in the game that is going to outscore many teams in the MAC. And St. Peter's right now making shots, and the Saints just simply are not. They're not manufacturing many good looks in their offense. The defense for St. Peter's has been the dominating force. Oganyemi pivots into the lane. Short hook shot is no good. Patterson the rebound. Peacock's on the run. Weish into the front court. Turns on the Jets. Weish feeds it to Welton. Knocked out of bounds. Off of Welton. It'll be Siena basketball with 12.50 to go. Saints have not called a timeout here. Down 48 to 32. Oganyemi out. Himes in. Brandwick in. Wholesale subs here for St. Peter's as well. Saints down 16 with 12.48 to go. They'll roll it in to right. It's joined by Page, Himes, Brandwick, and White. Himes on the right side. Dribbles in the right baseline. Himes hangs in the air. Had it blocked. Out of bounds off of Himes. St. Peter's basketball. Pool in. Page out. Broadcaster's nightmare the last 10 seconds. So many substitutions for both teams, mostly on the Saints side, but we're talking more about who's going out and who's coming in than we are about the actual game. Washington into the front court, right to left in the road, blue off to white. She gets a screen from Desport. Good distraction, though. Left side, Washington. The si crowd is silent. Washington on the left wing to Patterson. Feeds the right elbow, Rodney Hawkins spins into the lane. Hawkins, one-handed push shot is good. His first two of the game, and it's an 18-point lead, 50 to 32. Everyone's making shots on the Saints today. 12 minutes to go, St. Peter shooting 54%. White to pool, knocked away off of White, out of bounds, a turnover. St. Peter's pulling away here with 11.57 to go. They lead it 50 to 32. Timeout brought to you by All-Star Wine and Spirits on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. You are listening to Talk 1300. Hi, Saints fans. I'm Guy Madalone, founder and CEO of GTM Payroll Services in Clifton Park. As a Siena alum, I'm pleased that GTM is a proud sponsor of Siena Basketball. With almost 20 years of playing some great offerings, GTM provides comprehensive payroll, human resources, and insurance services to hundreds of businesses. Today, we distribute over 30,000 payroll checks every week to fans like you. Trying to get your company's payroll done before heading to a Saints game? Put GTM on your team. Call us today at 373-4111 or visit gtm.com and discover how GTM can help your team score. This winter, leave the driving to Amtrak. Whether you're traveling for business or pleasure, Amtrak is simply the easiest and most convenient way to travel. Right now, you can enjoy a 15% off discount between any two stations within New York State when you visit ilovenewyork.com to book your ticket. And don't forget, Amtrak operates more than 300 trains a day and services more than 500 destinations spanning across the country. Visit Amtrak.com for more information. Amtrak, enjoy the journey. You're listening to Siena Basketball on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. The Saints are home today, playing the Peacocks of St. Peter's. Now, back to the game. Siena will play next on Friday night at Manhattan. It's a 7 o'clock start. Andy Grizzoulis and I, along with the pregame show at 6.30. Then the Saints will take next Saturday and Sunday off and return to action the day after the Super Bowl. Monday, February 2nd, 7 p.m. start against Ryder. That game is a Time Warner telecast. Free game starts here on Talk 1300 at 6.30. Saints looking more than a little lifeless here. Down 18 points, 50 to 32 with under 12 minutes to go. Yeah, the body language right now for the Saints is not positive. And really, when you struggle at the offensive end, I don't care, you could be the greatest defensive player in the world. But when you struggle at the offensive end, it affects your entire game. And right now, the Saints are just flat out struggling at the offensive end. They have no answer for what St. Peter's is doing defensively. No offensive play they have run, no adjustment, no change they have made to be able to put points on the board against the St. Peter's defense. They have 32 points in about 28 minutes. Just simply put, not going to get it done at this level. And they're one out of 10 from the field in the second half. St. Peter's is six out of 10. 
and has pulled away to lead it 50 to 32. Washington on the left side. Here just Jack, a long three. Oh my, it's Pounded. good. It is good. Desi Washington with 16, and it is a 21 point lead. 11.20 to go. Everyone loves coming to the Times Union Center. They seem to shoot well and enjoy the environment. Best environment in the league. Right, at top to Brandwick. Left side, Oliver, straight away for right. St. Peter's just giving it to Siena right now with the 11 minutes to go. Heim soars into the lane, kicks it out for Oliver. Left corner three on the way, it's good! That's a nice pass right there by Evan Himes. Great crossover dribble to lose Washington. He got to the block, but kicked it out to the same side corner for a wide open Ryan Oliver three. Second three point field goal of the game for Ryan Oliver. One of his few open looks today. Ends a 15 0 St. Peter's run. Saints down 18 here, 53 to 35. Washington has really heated up. He's got 16. An explosive score off the fields to Patterson on the left wing. Drives left baseline, blows by Poole, lost the ball out of bounds, a turnover. Saints catch a break, maybe they can score on back-to-back -back possessions, let alone win back-to-back -back games. We're looking to score on back-to-back -back possessions. Welton and Dominique, the starting front court back in for Patterson and Desport. 53-35 with 10.25 to go. They'll roll the ball across midcourt, Wright will pick it up there. Can the Saints come back from being down 21? Right at the free throw line, hands it off to Oliver, left side for Heim. He'll shoot the three. No good off the back iron, right the rebound, lost it out of bounds. Stays with the Saints. Good traffic rebound right there by your point guard, and the Saints are going to need a healthy dose of open three-point shots. That one didn't fall, but a good look considering the position the Saints are in right now. Siena shooting 31%, St. Peter's 56%. Nice steal by Gaskins on Poole. They'll run three on one. Washington races in, lays it up and in. 18 for Washington. The lead back to 20 midway through the second half. This has been a very opportunistic St. Peter's team today. Every time the Saints have scored, it seems like St. Peter's turns it into a layup. Turned it over, you mean? I'm saying, yeah, turned it over, sorry. Right down the lane, blocked but fouled before the shot. Fifth foul against St. Peter's. Long and Oganyemi in, Poole and Brandwick out. Jamel Fields his third foul of the game, not a shooting foul. Oliver throws it out to the top of the key, Marquise Wright. Saints attacking left to right in the home white. Left side for Himes, right side to right. Looking to feed the post instead to Long, top of the key. Up fakes from there, off to Oliver. you will shoot a 19 footer. Short, rebounded by Dominique, who soars for that board. Long, kind of harassing him. Instead, they get it ahead for Fields. Who would have walked it across the timeline? St. Peter's will take some time off the clock here with 9.20 to go. Up by 20. 55-35. Dominique out top, left side for Washington. Straight away for Gaskins. Right wing, Fields. Feeds the post, Dominique. Relatively quiet today. Backs his way in. Short bank shot off glass and in. 14 for Dominique. Made that look easy. The Saints would love to have anyone remotely close to relatively quiet because with his relatively quiet 14 points, he'd be the leading scorer for the Saints. He is six out of nine from the field. Also has seven rebounds. Oliver feeds the post, Oganyemi. Javion backs in. Spin move baseline. Banks it off glass and in. Javion finally gets one to fall. Before that, he was 0 for 5 from the field. Wow. And most of those within three feet. Javion came into the game third in the MAC and field goal percentage, 55%. Now one for six. Trap in the backcourt. Saints push up too much. Dominique gathers ahead of steam and draws the foul. Saints sent a couple of players towards midcourt. They threw it right over the top of them for a 2 on 1 break. Well, they're taking some chances. I, I have less problem with that than I do with what they're trying to do at the offensive end. but. Javion really the lone wolf, two on one for St. Peter's. Dominique really didn't even change directions, just went into a straight line path to the basket, got the knee into the chest of Javion. They called a foul. Third foul on Oganyemi. Dominique to the line, a 73% free throw shooter. This will be his first attempt of the game. And it's good. 15 for Dominique, the Fordham transfer, preseason first team All Mac, third team All Mac last year. Well, with 
about eight and a half minutes to go in the game. St. Peter's will get to their season average in scoring or close to it. They're at 58 right now. They average 61 points coming into this game. Ninth in the Mac. Oliver to a cutting Himes down the left side of the lane. Blocked foul. Bad call. Jamel Fields, I believe, just picked up his fourth. He did. Evan turned the corner on that pass, on that screen, and just caught the ball, continued his momentum down the lane, and just ran into a St. Peter's defender. 8.15 to go, 58-37. St. Peter's up by 21, comfortably ahead. Himes to the line, Evan, an 81% free throw shooter. Made the first. Rob Poole into the game for Ryan Oliver. Himes currently in the top 30 all-time in scoring, 12th in assists, the 11th in threes at Siena in history. And his second free throw is good. Seven points for Himes. Saints down 58-39 with 8.15 to go. Saints do not have a player in double figures. St. Peter's has three and another player has nine. Washington hounded in the backcourt by Himes. Full court man pressure. Washington, a good job to get it across the timeline to Weish. He'll zigzag to the top of the key, off to Gaskins. Eight minutes left to go, Saints down 19. Gaskins drives down the lane, missed the shot. Welton, the strong rebound, and he lays it in. One player amongst four defenders, and the one player was Welton, and he came up with a rebound and the putback. 12 points for Welton. 60 to 39. Saints throw it directly out of bounds. No, saved back in. The good hustle by Long. That's a great hustle. To Himes. He had a shot blocked easily by Washington, and now the Saints' possession does end. Gaskins the loose ball. That was not a good attempt right there by Evan Himes. Washington out top, right side for Weish. 7.20 to go here. Welton to Washington. Feeds the post for his fellow fifth year senior, Marvin Dominique. Kicks it out, Washington. Thought about the three. Dribbles by right to Dominique. Wide open. Three pointer on the way. Why not? Wow. St. Peter's pouring it on. 18 for Dominique. And it is a 20. Oh, that was a two point shot. Two point shot. 62 39. Putting on an offensive clinic. They're getting whatever shot that they want to. The ball is always in the right person's hands. 59% shooting for the Peacocks. Saints right now are doing a lot of one on one basketball. Right on the right side, down the lane, stops about 13 feet away, kicks it out for Himes. Eight to shoot, feeds the post long. Backs his way in, short range shot, rolls around and in. Eight points for Long. 62-41 with 6.25 to go. Gaskins in the backcourt. Gaskins right to left, guarded by Poole in the man-to-man. -man. Off to Washington, to Weish. Feeds it out for Dominique, splits two defenders into the corner for Gaskins, who made a three, but a timeout St. Peter's before Gaskins buried the triple, so it will not count. Thank you, John Dunn. Mercifully. <laughs> Prime Companies is a proud partner of Siena Athletics. Special thanks to Dr. Hamish Kerr of Albany Medical Center, the official sports medicine provider of Siena Athletics. Today's Assist of the Game is brought to you by UHY LLP, the Capital Region's leading choice for professional tax and business consulting services. If you've been here to the Knickerbocker Arena or the Pepsi Arena or the Times Union Center at any point over the last 20 years or so, you've heard one voice on the public address system. Our good buddy Scott Noel celebrating his 44th birthday today and we wanted to send a shout out to the voice of the Times Union Center, Scott Noel, who one week and one day ago became a father for the first time when he and his lovely wife Katie welcomed Jack Gordon Noel into this wild and crazy world. Scott Noel, 44 years young today. I was gonna say, this one may have been the sweetest birthday other than maybe when he turned 21. But having a kid a week, eight days ago, I'm sure made this birthday even sweeter. And Scott doing his thing right now. Is there some sort of shooting contest going on on the court with the Saints on their way to their 11th loss of the season in 19 games, 62-41 with 6.10 left to go. And barring a Miraculous comeback, Sienna will once again fail to win its third straight game for the third time this season. St. Peter's, if they close this out, 
would improve to four and six in league play. Saints would fall to five and five. Saints can't seem to get that weekend sweep, which is what they're desperately seeking. A lot of Friday, Sunday games in the MAC. So far this season, the Saints have been unable to sweep a weekend series. They have also not been swept. They have split, if they lose here, all five of those weekend doubleheaders. Very inconsistent right from the opening tip this season. Haven't won more than two in a row, haven't lost more than four in a row. St. Peter's will inbound the ball. Get it in for Washington with 18 on the shot clock. He's trapped on the sideline. Another timeout. He was in trouble and John Dunn calls a timeout about eh, 16 inches away from where Washington was pivoting. He had a good vantage point. Yes, he did. St. Peter's, the magic mark for their opponents this year. Check that, check that. The magic mark for St. Peter's in scoring this year has been the number 59. When they score 59 points or more, they're nine and two, every one of their wins. They score less than 59, 0 oh and nine. They've got 62 and there's still 6.05 left to go. Unfortunately, the Saints only have 41. And I look at it on the flip side. When the Saints are able to put some points in the board and get to, what, 70? Their success rate is extremely strong. And right now, the Saints have 41 points. And I've always been the guy that worries about how my team plays, not necessarily how or what the other team does. And right now, unfortunately, with the way Siena is playing offensively, they have to really worry about how their opponent plays, not so much how they play. Timeout brought to you by All-Star Wine and Spirit. St. Peter's possession when we come back. Six minutes left to go. St. Peter's 62, Siena 41. The Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. You are listening to Talk 1300. I'm Rob McCormick, President and CEO of Trusco Bank, the presenting sponsor of Siena Basketball. You can trust that Siena prepares their students to be the leaders of tomorrow, just as you can trust in the strength of Trusco Bank. For over 100 years, Trusco Bank has been financially strong and will continue to be so into the future by using core banking principles and safe lending practices. I welcome you to stop into any of our hometown locations. We offer modern convenience with old school service. Member of DIC, Equal Housing Lender. Experience the style and elegance of Stonegate, a luxury apartment community designed by the Rossetti family. Stonegate, conveniently located in North Greenbush, just minutes off Interstate 90. And Stonegate has everything you need to make living easy. With six unique open floor plans, Stonegate is ideal for entertaining as well as daily living. Whether you're a busy professional or retired, why not enjoy maintenance free living at Stonegate? Now open daily, 11 to 3, including weekends. Rossetti Properties, building communities you call home. Love where you live. For more, visit liveatstonegate.com. You're listening to Siena Basketball on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. The Saints are home today, playing the Peacocks of St. Peter's. Now, back to the game. 62-41, St. Peter's leads Siena with six minutes left to go. St. Peter's well on their way to a victory here. Play will resume with St. Peter's having the ball. And 10 on the shot clock. They get it in for Washington in the corner. Takes it out right wing. Gets a screen from Dominique. Washington has caught fire in the second half. He pivots with two to shoot. Washington fadeaway 16. Footer is good. Tough shot. 20 points for Desi Washington. And he is a shot maker as Robert turned my mic off. Some of my best work was just missed. Page to the basket. Draws the foul. Cordier Welton, his third. Jimmy Page back in the game. Saints down 23 here, 64-41, matching their biggest deficit of the game. Page will go to the line for two shots. And gets the first one to go. Second free throw is up. It's good. First two of the game for Jimmy Page, the 6'4 freshman, and the Saints down 21 here, 64-43. Full court press. Lob it into the corner for Washington. 
Near side to Gaskins. Into the front court, right to left. St. Peter's just salting this one away with five and a half to go, up by 21. Handed off to Washington. Takes it over near side left to Weish. 13 to shoot. Weish to the right elbow. Weish handling the ball here down the left side of the lane. Shot rejected out of bounds by LaVon Long with seven to shoot. 5-12 left to go, Saints down 21. A good defensive stance when they're down 21. Seven on the shot clock. And looking at the actual time, this is on pace to be by far the fastest game Siena's played all year. It's only 3.30. 3.35 now. Washington leans into a three, finally missed, got his own rebound, lays it up and in. 22 for Desi Washington. Five minutes to go, 66-43. Loose balls seem to be finding their way into the hands of the Peacocks all day long. And that missed rebound or that missed shot was an indication the whole day. Long, nifty between the legs dribble. Lo throws it up off the left side of the backboard, but was fouled. Foul on Quidier Welton, his fourth. Long will go to the line with the Saints down by 23. This is the only lopsided game in the MAC going on right now. Second half, nine minutes left to go. Marist desperate to break a 14 game losing streak as Monmouth, or as uh, Long makes the first. Maris 47, Fairfield 42. That would be a damaging loss for Fairfield as they're right in the middle of the standings. Maris is 0-9 and seven and a half minutes to go. Monmouth and Manhattan tied at 54. Long makes them both, he's got 10. He is the first Siena player into double figures. That Monmouth-Manhattan game matching two of the teams towards the top of the conference standings. Manhattan tied with Siena for fifth place. Monmouth tied for first place. They bum rush Washington, he lost the ball, goes right to Weish. With 4.35 to go, 66-45, Peacocks. Weish between the circles, guarded loosely by Himes, gets it off to Gaskin, 16 to shoot. Worked on by Poole in the man-to-man. -man. Gaskins with 10 on the shot clock, gets a screen right from Welton, takes it down the right side of the lane to Dominique, gets one man in the air, flips it up with the right hand, no good, rebound, lost by Ogunyemi, Gaskins has it. And he's fouled. That'll put Gaskins at the line for one and one. Foul on right, his second. Saints got the miss again, but they can't get the rebound. Tyler Gaskins to the line to try to become the fourth St. Peter's player into double figures. Gaskins, 51% from the line, will have one and one. Has not attempted a free throw today. And he misses this one, but guess who got the rebound? Marvin Dominique. He'll take it to the basket, lay it in. Oh, missed it, missed the layup. Rebound long. Long diagonal pass ahead to Himes. Slices to the rack, lays it up and in. Soft touch with the finger roll. Really nowhere to go and slices between two defenders. Great rebound by LeVon Long. Nine points for Himes. Saints down 66-47 with 3.45 to go. Nine assists now for Travis Weish. Marvin Dominique has eight rebounds to go along with 17 points. Washington will dribble near midcourt with 16 on the shot clock. He leads all scores with 22 points. Also has three rebounds. Seven out of 11 from the field. Washington down the left side of the lane. Kicks it out for Dominique in the left corner with three to shoot. Dominique galloping to the basket. Lays it up no good. Tipped up no good. Rebound loose. Long has it for Siena. Outlet to right, pushes into the front court, left to right, right down the lane. Missed the layup. Kind of a runner, and then a foul on the rebound against St. Peter's. It's gonna be called on Travis Weish, his third final timeout brought to you by All-Star Wine and Spirits. 3.05 to go, St. Peter's rolling here, 66-47. The Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. You are listening to Talk 1300. Hi, Saints fans, I'm Guy Madalone, founder and CEO of GTM Payroll Services and Clifton Park. As a Siena alum, I'm pleased that GTM is a proud sponsor of Siena Basketball. With almost 20 years of playing some great offense, GTM provides comprehensive payroll, human resources, 
insurance services to hundreds of businesses. Today, we distribute over 30,000 payroll checks every week to fans like you. Trying to get your company's payroll done before heading to a Saints game? Put GTM on your team. Call us today at 373-4111 or visit gtm.com and discover how GTM can help your team score. The role of IT in higher education is evolving, and no one knows that better than this. We've been a technical colleague to colleges and universities across New York State since 1970. With solutions like wireless, virtual desktop, and visual security, we help campuses stay safe, mobile, and on the cutting edge. I'm Ray Appy, President and CEO of ANIS. Let us help you create a connected learning environment for today's connected generation. Visit us at anise.com forward slash higher ed. That's A-N-N-E-S-E dot com. And go Saints! You're listening to Siena Basketball on the Talk 1300 Siena Basketball Radio Network. The Saints are on the road this afternoon playing the Purple Eagles of Niagara. Now, back to the game. 3.05 left to go in this one. And the outcome has been decided long ago. St. Peter's leads Siena 66 to 47. Robert Lee, Tom Herter here with you. St. Peter's still shooting a scorching 53%. That's actually come down over the past few minutes. Saints struggling at 33%. St. Peter's plus nine on the glass. St. Peter's six of 10 from the three point line. Points off a of turnover. St. Peter's 27 to three. Yikes. You said turnovers would be a key factor. Yes, you did. And scoring in the paint. St. Wright makes the first. St. Peter's, not only have they made six of 10 from downtown, but they've gotten a lot of putbacks or a lot of drives to the basket where they've been able to get to the rim. Second free throw for Wright is good. He's got nine points. Saints down 17 now with 3.05 to go, 66-49. Travis Weiss still in there. Brings it into the front court. Has nine assists, four turnovers, and four steals. In fact, most of the St. Peter's starters still in there with 2.50 to go. Saints have brought Mike Wilson a walk on into the game, fourth game he's played this season. Jimmy Merrill set to check in as well. Weiss gets a screen right. Takes it under the basket and was out of bounds. John Dunn still upset. 2.38 to go. Merrill into the game for Ogun Yemi. Merrill playing in his fifth game this season. Mike Wilson came in. There wasn't a big <laughs> round of applause for Mike Wilson. What's wrong with Mike Wilson? 2.35 to go, 66-49. Right careens into a St. Peter's player. Missed the shot badly. And it's rebounded by Washington. 2.25 to go. Another one-touch possession right there for the Saints. 66-49. St. Peter's by 17. Washington hands it off to Weish. Gives it to Gaskins. Gets a screen right from Welton. Gaskins throws it backwards for Washington with seven to shoot. Washington gets a screen. Pulls up for an 18-footer block by right. Merrill, the loose ball. Up ahead for Long. 150 to go. Long runs into Welton, gallops to the basket and lays it in. Levon Long with 12. Some long strides by Levon Long to get up the floor right there. That was impressive. 140 to go, 15 point lead, 66-51. 6-0 run by the Saints. Washington had it stolen by Mike Wilson. He'll race in uncontested and lay it in. Mike Wilson, who had scored two points this season, doubles that total and makes it 66-53 with 125 to go. The end result of this is going to look a lot closer than the game really was in the second half, but Sienna fighting hard to the end. Weish had it knocked away. Weish keeps it, and he was fouled. Timeout. Nope, timeout St. Peter's. 66-53 with 1.16 to go. Ryan Kelly will check into the game. Ryan Kelly, a 6'3 sophomore from Brandon, Vermont. He has not scored this season. This is his third game. Walk on, used to be a team manager. Saints down 13 with 1.16 to go. <laughs> 66-53. St. Peter's with the lead and they've cleared the bench. 
Elisha Boone in, Jamel Fields, Rodney Hawkins, Chris Roll in for the first time. Chas Patterson. There's a nice picture, isn't it? Jimmy Patsos on the bench with Rob Poole and Evan Himes as two uh, seniors. Patterson between the circles, off to Boone. Final minute here with 10 on the shot clock. Saints down 13. Fields had the ball batted away. Loose ball, out of bounds to Siena. Into the game, Mohamed Faree. Playing in his third game of the season, a senior from Kearney, New Jersey. For St. Peter's. Both teams clearing the benches here. 55 seconds left, Saints down 13. Mike Wilson around the point. Wilson gets a screen from Page. Left side for Long, still in there. Feeds the post Page, stolen away. Foul, Long. See, this is where I, as a coach, would yell at Mike Wilson. Because that kid can shoot, and he's not even looking to shoot. And in this type of game, if you're open at the three-point line, let her fly. But the post-entry pass by LeVon Long into Jimmy Page, who could not hold his post position. Stolen by Jamel Fields from behind. Jamel Fields would have had a breakaway layup, and LeVon stopped him. Putting Fields on the line, and Fields makes the first of his two free throws. Turnovers and points off of those turnovers have been a story here today. Saints have turned it over right from the opening tip. They scored on their first possession on a dunk, and then they turned it over their next two possessions, and that has been how the game has gone. Final 35 seconds here. Saints down 14, 67, 53. Long on the right side. See one of the walk-ons can get a shot here. Long lost it, turns it over. Fields to Hawkins. He'll hammer it home with one hand. That's appropriate. A right. turnover led to a dunk. A tomahawk dunk for Rodney Hawkins puts the exclamation point on this one, 69-53. Coach Patso says do not shoot the ball here with 17 seconds left. No, they'll run the offense. Wilson, left side for Merrill. Jimmy Tennis the three, in and out. Rebounded by Long and fouled with 11 seconds left to go. My pen has run out of ink. And this game has run out of time. <laughs> This is the behind the scenes look you love from the Siena broadcast team. <laughs> 11 seconds left to go, long to the line. Somewhat easy to get distracted, my apologies. Long will have two shots, and he made the first. Levon will finish up as Siena's leading scorer today. He's got 13 points. Let's go along with five rebounds. It's good. 14 for Long. And St. Peter's does not have to take another shot. And they will not. Final seconds coming off the full shot off the clock. And the final score, St. Peter's 69 and Siena 55. Tough game for the Saints. Turnovers really hurt them. Hot shooting of the Peacocks definitely hurt them as well. But suffice to say, they averaged 72 points coming into the game. They scored just 55. St. Peter's averaged 61 coming into the game. They scored 69. Tough start, tough game for the Saints. Siena falls to 8 and 11, 5 and 5 in the max. St. Peter's improves to 10 and 11, 4 and 6 in conference play. Today was Greg Manning's scout. Good crowd. Great crowd. 6,244 on hand here. So 13,000 approximately showed up yep. Friday and today to watch the Saints. That's pretty good. Yeah, two games this weekend. 13,000 fans in the building. 6,200 and change today. We are now joined by Siena assistant coach Greg Manning. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time uh, after a tough loss. Kind of a nip and tuck battle to start. They pulled away a little towards the end of the first half, but what happened in the second half is they just poured it on. Yeah, we just, to start the second half, we weren't ready to play. You know, we scored seven points, I think, in the first eight minutes of the second half, something like that. And uh, they went on a run and they got all the momentum and we didn't get any stops and we went from there. They shot finals uh, about 53, 55% for the game. This seems to be a common theme. What did they do uh, to really you know, execute so well when they really have an all-season. Uh, we didn't play any defense. They're the, I told them before the game, I told them the last day and a half that they're the best defensive team in the league, and I don't know. I don't know if they just didn't believe me or weren't listening, but a team that only gives up 60 points a game, they don't average 69 points, so we didn't play any defense, but 
uh, again, they're the best defensive team in the league, and you got to really execute against teams like that that sit back and make you beat them from the outside, and they do a good job of helpline defense, and Coach Dunn's a great coach. I mean, he's been in the league for a while. We know what he does. He's always been a defensive guy, and uh, we didn't execute at all. Points off turnovers seem yeah. to be a big stat that jumped out at us. 30 for St. Peter's, 5 for the Saints. 